So there's multiple ways to do this. Um, and I'm going to be using a heavier way to sort of do this because I thought it yielded better results, but it's a lot heavier to compute. But I will also show you some other ways to do it. So one way you could do this, um, and this is not the way that I use, by the way, I will just be showing it. If you do VDB from particles, and let's press escape because it's going to be slow. So let's put it to manual maybe so it doesn't update. What I want to do is I want to have this division size. I want to also put this in our division size of our VDB here. Also put it in our point radius scale and maybe also put it in our minimum radius. I think we might need to increase this manually. I'm not sure if it's going to cook properly, but let's just have a look at it. Let's put it to, um, put it to VOC VDB. Right. So let's have a look. Density. All right, so this isn't really looking how we want it to look. So why is that? Then City density, it should pick up on our density. So let's have a look why that is not happening. Okay, maybe what we wanna don't wanna do is use this. Maybe wanna create a little plus icon. Tell it to be density. All right, so now this is working and I'll call this density. Okay, so right now what we did is we recreated our, so, so this is our density, and then we recreated our density over here from our density attribute. But let's grab our visual, so let's make a visualizer. So visualization, just tell us, put it like that. Okay, the problem I found with doing it like this, so it, it does look okay, to be honest. Um, it doesn't look that bad. But the thing I really noticed is that if I do it uh, this way with the VDB from particles is that I, I will lose uh, all of detail on higher resolution simulations. I will be using this to extract velocity later because it's just faster. Um, but I will now show you another way to sort of rebuild this that I did, which is slower than doing it like this. But I thought it yielded better results. But I mean, your results may vary. Uh, it might also depend on the setup. This is what I got from just experimenting a lot. So let's let's show the other way of doing it. Okay, so what I will be doing is we're creating a box. And let's put this box. Put it on here. All right. So we create a box, which is the size. Well, if you put a box in something, it will create a size. It will create a, a box the size of the bounding box of the object you connect it to. So what we want to do here is we want to create a VDB from polygons. So like that. And what we want to do is we don't want a sign distance field. We want it to be a VOC VDB. And what we want to do is we want to use this, uh, this linked channel that we have, right, from the pyro. We want to use this in here as well. Okay, so essentially what we're sort of doing here is um, because we create this box, we're essentially somewhat matching the resolution of the original pyro here. It's not exact. Uh, I think if I put it like this, so it is it's not exactly the same, but it somewhat matches the. Uh, you can see 87, So it's it's somewhat similar. Don't get the exact same result, but it's, it's similar enough. Um, so yeah, we could either put it over here. This one create makes it a little bit bigger. So I could, I would say probably we put it over here. Right, so now we have a density VDB here. And what we want to do is, uh, so what I mentioned before is that VDBs are inherently sparse. So, that means that this thing isn't completely filled. 
what we want to do is we want to fill interior. So now it's in completely filled. And this does make it a lot bigger, probably. So if I turn this off, you can see 3.88 megabytes. And this will be 4.98 megabytes. So it's a lot bigger. And let's say, see how big our VDB here was. So it's actually this is, uh, but this 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 already has some information in it, right? This one is just completely filled with uh, just with just basic density. So we probably want to increase the exterior band voxels. Just uh, that just has to do with the sparse the sparsity of the volume. Um, so essentially, it has some more voxels outside of the volume to work with, basically. So this the uh, it's just the band. You can see that probably better if I do it over here. Let's see if I can visualize that. Uh, I'm not sure if that wants to. Uh, anyway, let's let's just ignore that for now. But just put it up, uh, and that will mean that there, uh, like for every voxel, it will be sparse, so it will be it will throw away information around it that's not needed. But if you uh, increase the exterior band voxels, it will sort of have more of a more of a padding to work with. Okay, so now we need to do something. That's basically where the magic is going to happen. What we're going to do is we create a volume vol. Let's create it. Let's connect our volume and then connect our points in the second input. So a volume vol, like you should probably know how to use vops. Again, if you don't know how to use vops, uh, how the one on one goes a lot in vops and, and general usage, and you should probably stay. Uh, start with something like that. Um, but generally, where a point VOP, uh, just, or a primitive VOP, or whatever you're, you're using in types of VOP, runs over every point, every primitive, whatever, a volume VOP will run over every voxel. So again, this thing has, if you see over here, this one has 87 by 63 by 90 voxels. So, and again, voxels are 3D pixels. So this is just gonna be what this thing is. Remember, like if you play Minecraft, something like that, right? With the box. I think Minecraft is even voxel based. Anyway, so a lot of the techniques that we can use in a point VOP, we can also use in a, a volume VOP. What we can even do is we can sample points from from uh, from like an outside and then put them into our volume VOP. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type PC open. This will create a point cloud. So I probably need to explain what a point cloud is. So let me just hop into Photoshop and then it's gonna be a little bit easier to explain what a point cloud is if I can just try draw a little image. Okay, so we're here inside of Photoshop. I drawn a whole bunch of uh, particles here, so points. Well, if we're gonna do a point cloud, essentially what we're doing is for every point, we're gonna we're gonna just have a look at, at that point. So let me just put in other colors and make it easier to draw. So um, maybe let's do just do a shape. It's going to be even easier. All right. So for every point, um, we're going to look around it's, uh, the point and see if we can find something. So let's make a circle. All right. So this will be sort of the search radius. So we have this thing. And right now with this radius, it doesn't find any friends. But if it wants to find some friends, what it needs to do is it needs to be bigger. So if I make this radius bigger, um, yeah, yeah. so if I make the radius big enough, this point will find some friends. So if I do a point cloud lookup, and I'm, I so I say the radius, so it's like, oh, uh, my radius is, is one, I'm not gonna find anything, make my radius two. Ah, now I will find these friends. How many friends did I find? I found three friends. And again, each point has an has an has an index, which is its point number. If I make the thing even bigger, then I find all of these friends. So one, two, three, four, whatever. And I can I can increase the thing and I make it even bigger and I find all these friends. But let's say I can also say that okay, I I only want to find a maximum of x amount of friends. So if I put it to three, I will only find this friend, this friend, and this friend. If I put it to six, I would also find these friends, but we won't find these friends because it will be it will have a sort of a maximum. Anyway, so that's what a point cloud is. And 
so essentially what you can do is you can um, you can do this, for example, from one input. So for example, this point might be input one of our wrangle. So if we have our, let's say, okay, so let's let's maybe do it with a different color. Let's say we have, uh, let's say our second input of our geometry stream is blue. So let's say we have, it's gonna be this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, whatever. And for each, of, so, and then we're gonna look at the second input, which is the white point. And then for each of these points, it's gonna make this circle and then see which ones it can find. And then once it finds them, I can ask it something like, for example, okay, so this blue one here, it's like, ah, uh, it found this friend. And then once it found its, its friend, so like, okay, this circle is big enough, so like, like this. So now it found its friend. And now we can ask this friend for like, hey, yo, dude, I uh, like, uh, can you give me uh, the, like the uh, your mom's name or whatever, or or like, what's your favorite cheese? Or anyway, so it can it can it can just ask his friend for like for stuff. So if the circle is bigger, then it can also ask its other friends. Yeah. Group now it can uh, now it can ask all of these friends like stuff. So like, oh, what's your favorite cheese? Oh, it's Billy. What's your favorite cheese? Oh, it's Gouda. Anyway, so a whole bunch of like favorite. Uh... Anyway, so that's basically what the point cloud is. Now that we got the theory out, theory out of the way, let's go back into Houdini. So then we can actually start using it. So then you sort of at least understand what's going on. Yeah.